Welcome crew, this is my uh, fourth uh, installation in my various uh, oil pastel techniques and uh, we've moved up to the uh, stage where as you re recall the last video where I was tinting and toning uh, canvas blocks that I have here and I tinted and toned this paper block. So this one started out with all water-based uh, materials so I could paint on it with acrylic and that's what I'm going to do today and uh, the black lines were in charcoal so they won't resist the uh, acrylic paint as well. So it's a just a rough patina, nothing there I particularly like because I know what I'm going to build up on this surface. The other approach uh, I showed you the last video was toning the paper just using um, oil bars, oil pastels, and then hitting it with a uh, matte medium or I could use a Gamsol with a rag. So I'm just toning this archival paper, it's an archival canvas paper, and I'm using uh, the China markers and grease pencils on this to get my black line. So this one we won't be painting on today because this will never take acrylic paint on top of it. What we're going to do is just paint on this uh, water-based, uh, uh, acrylic-based uh, square canvas and I've already done some minimal acrylic on the base and then I worked in on it with the charcoal. So I'm going to adjust the camera so you can see me start to apply paint here. I'm using acrylic paint. I'm using this Lucas Krill Studio version. I get it at Jerry's Artorama. You can find it on the internet. But I did something unique today. I added some matte medium and you can get matte medium produced by everybody it's it's a, it's on every online store every art store you could get gel medium each of them you could get extenders to add to your acrylic you could get non-drying um, solutions to add to it so there's a myriad of uh, solutions that are made to mix with your acrylic paint and, you, and of course you can mix them in little dishes. I have dishes of color here. And I just put a couple drops of this gel medium, no, matte medium on top of it. And uh, I just wanna see how it works. I've actually never used this. I've used extenders, non-dryers uh, with my acrylic, but let's see what the gel medium does. It's always good to experiment. Uh, okay, let's uh, move to the next phase. Okay, crew, we're back. Uh, so you can use anything to apply your paint here. I'm going to be a little experimental today because I want to use solid colors more than I have been doing. So I don't like to use a lot of water in the brush when I'm doing acrylic, but what I do do is dip it in and, and make it moist so it just uh, lessens the drag and I'm gonna just take some yellow paint you see here and I'm just looking where to apply it I, I, I don't know and I wanna create some new motion in here I wanna mix it with the uh, matte medium and come in here a little bit and you can see how the charcoal is blending with the paint so I'm getting some introduction of black moving in there which is nice I don't have to apply black paint Let's see, there we go.
So I'm looking always in here for new new arrangements, new shapes. So let me leave that right here like that. And let me just hit a bit of this magenta. And then I have a little mixing tray I use so I can apply that in there and I'm always looking for motion and what I am going to do is come in here with a rag and start to st take some areas out and then what I do is come in with this little uh, scoring device I have these will just grab the paint and take it up wherever I drag it through. See that right there? And then I'm going to do another one here. So you can see that little motion added new design. And then I wipe off the paint. So I want to start adding. A little more magenta. I'm going to go to another brush. This is another kind of brush. This is a uh, just a sponge on the end. You've seen those. And I dip that in a little water. And I'm going to grab a little more of this magenta. And just come right in here. this edge so this is nice it kind of floats on top of the lower base and I've let the lower base dry enough so I can gently drag across the top of it this dry and set up because I want to start to introduce new colors on top and I just want to drag them across the top gently to create another layer of patina so this is just a little bit of a beginning to get me going where I'm seeing new dynamics new energy from the shapes and I don't want to interfere in here too much what I might do sometimes I uh, I use this plastic tool save every it's not really a tool it's some weird device that goes on the end of a garden hose and I soak that in water so I make these edges have a little bit of water and I'm gonna come in here with this blue paint and you know I'm just trying to I'm not a dripper as as uh, art style and technique goes but you know, I'll drop a few spots here and there, and uh, just to see how they work. So you can see that, you know, you feel free to do everything under the sun to make your art unique. And have every kind of tool available to you. I keep these plastic um, palette knives next nearby, and I can go right through here with the palette knife as you see so I get another treatment going and keep keep using new materials find new materials and uh, you're gonna find it really enhances your work so let me let this dry up a little bit and I want to come back over it with another treatment okay I'll be back real soon bye bye Okay, crew, you're back. Um, what I did with this piece is I took it outside, let it bake in the sun, and get it very close to bone dry. And, you know, just to reiterate that first session, I've worked with uh, 
broader, cruder brushes just to block in my color. I'm, I'm not finessing anything down at this layer with the acrylic. The cruder it looks, for some reason, it's better for me. And I'm trying to recreate and mimic the intonation and texture of oil pastels or the oil bars. As you can see here, you see all that light variegation and texture in there. And um, that's what I'm trying to reproduce. And that doesn't look much different than a purely oil pastel surface, which is this. So this is what I'm trying to get. I'm all about a dirty surface that has a lot of emotion in it and a lot of uh, texture and feel to grab the viewer. So now that this one's bone dry, I introduce a finer set of brushes. So these brushes I found on the internet. They're called, uh, what, Benici? Um, it sounds Italian, but they're made in China. So these are a little finer, finer hair. And I can get more nuance and subtle glazing when I use these finer brushes on my uh, finished acrylic piece down here. And so I know what I want to use here. So I want to use this wide fan to create some unique vignettes. And then I want to use an angle, an angle brush. And then I want to use the broad hair rounded corner brush and uh, this was inexpensive but these are very good quality so look for those they're state I, I, yeah as I said they're on Amazon they could be at Dick Blick or Jerry's Artorama and then there's many other competitive brushes equally as good so that's a tip uh, what I'm gonna do now is take this I want to get the yellow a little hotter and a little warmer and uh, I'm taking my matte medium and mixing it into the yellow once again and now I'm gonna feather on top just to get a little more subtlety and pull up the color and I want it to be a little brighter and get down here in the corner and I use a brush not that dissimilar than how I use a finger when I draw or I use pastels uh, me and a brush haven't you know had a happy marriage I guess so and I'm getting more comfortable with it I used to be at a younger age real comfortable with a brush but now since I've been doing so much drafting over my life that uh, it's a little uncomfortable. So let me just drop a swag of color in here and let me drop some in this corner here. So you notice I balance. I have a hot corner here, I have a hot corner here. You know, I have. A lot of subtle tricks if you see me work I don't really get into them or talk about them they're just nuances of style you adopt over years of working and you really don't think about them so I don't think to talk about them and uh, well, I, I still want to use this brush so I'm gonna wash it I have a bucket of water there next to me I'm gonna wipe it out and I want to come in here with uh, that matte medium with this kind of aqua turquoise blue. I want to add a little yellow to it. And I want to see where this baby will go. There we go. And you notice I'm just dragging gently. And let me show you up here if you can see. This is a nice fine hair on this brush and I'm getting just subtle nuances that I want. So it's not too much of a heavy hand, it's very light, just dragging. And I can go back in here and then 
create the vignette I want. And let me add a little white in there. So I come up with my color combos on the run. It's 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 not pre-planned at all. Uh, let's see. There we go. Let me get a little yellow. So, there is something I can pull out there. This edge is nice right in here. So, I will uh, work this up to finish, and I might do two, you know, this is the... Uh, second layer and I might go up to four layers I usually do that and that gets me up to a good base where I feel comfortable starting to dive in with the oil uh, bars oil pastels and I'm constantly toning over other surfaces and just hitting it very lightly so far I haven't used a big broad brush because I like this look and then I'm going to come in here, something, something here, no, nope. I'm liking around this round set right here, how I'm going to do this, I don't know. And then let me take that out, a little saliva. We'll take that out. There we go. So, I like this shape in here. Now, I like to let black lines come through, bleed through. A lot of my, maybe 20% of my black lines I want to show through. I don't want to paint over them because the black lines are the bones and architecture of your piece. And they, they glue the uh, viewer's eye to start following and, and following along and kind of following along with your thinking pattern of uh, creating a design. So... Let's see, let me get a little more white here. And this, this I can do quite a bit all day. This is the fun. This is pure fun right here. Because you are, you're really creating something unique, personal to you. And let me get up in this corner and knock that back a little bit. So, I see something I want to do here, but I might have to go to another brush. I like this area here and I just gentle drag see that gentle drag very gentle and don't be afraid to feather your edges with your finger yeah, little saliva does the trick and that's nice right in there now I want to use the angle brush because I want to get in this area and you're going to learn the properties of all your brushes the more you work with them and 
And that's the fun. The, you know, nobody showed me any of this stuff. I only learned it by doing it. So you want to do it. So let's see what I'm going to get in here. Uh, so there's that angle. I want to come in that sharp area. I, I want to come from here and around. And I just want to drag it naturally. That's that's all I need and then I can feather. And the rest of the treatments I want to do to it will happen when I start carving in this with uh, the oil pastels and the grease pencils and the whole shebang. So let me grab here. There we go. So I'm starting to see really wonderful stuff happening. And just for the sake of not making this video one and two hours long, I'm going to let you all go and hopefully you get to work on something. And uh, you can see the base layer that I create from the acrylic. And once I get this done in two or three more passes, then we will, I will do another video showing you how I cut into it with um, the oil bars and oil pastels and then I use the uh, matte medium blenders, the wax blenders. I might fix it, uh, spray this with a fixative, uh, but this has to be bone dry so I can work on top of it with the, uh, um, the uh, oil mediums okay so see I, I can't stop once it starts uh, that's nice in there let me take my finger and I'm just taking the finger there now I don't really love it so I'm going to let it get semi-dry and I'm going to do a whoosh through there, swoosh. And there you go. But this is going to get worked up some more with uh, a few more sessions of paint. But I will show you the final session in uh, oil bars and oil pastel. Okay, I hope this lesson... Uh, was informative and I appreciate your likes and views and whatever you can share with your fellow artist friends is wonderful. Thank you and have a good day. Bye bye. There we go. That's all you gotta do.